So hello everyone and welcome to this next lecture on Python Power Electronics and in this lecture I'm going to talk about how filtering can be used to filter out the inverter output but this time the inverter is switched with pulse width modulation. So let me just go over to my directory and describe what I'm going to do. So this is the simulation file package. Now in the previous case I had talked about square wave modulation. And I talked about how let me open the file. So I talked about how if the blue waveform is the rectangular waveform output of a of a single inverter leg, which is switched according to almost you can say a square wave modulation, you will need a very large filter in order to achieve such a sinusoidal voltage. We have achieved a sinusoidal voltage. The orange line is the filtered output available to the load. But the cost of getting this filtered output is huge. The amount, the kind of filter parameters that you need are huge. We had, we had a 10 milli Henry inductor and a 1 milli farad capacitor. These are almost impractical values of filter, filter parameters. So this time we shall go over to the next concept. That is we will talk about how we can use exactly the same circuit. So let me open it. So this is exactly the same circuit that is we have one inverter leg with an upper leg upper switch and a lower switch the midpoint is accessible we have two voltage sources again the midpoint is accessible and in this case we are not only measuring the output voltage of this or not it's not really the output voltage we are not measuring just the bridge voltage across this midpoint but we are also have an extension and that is inverter output So in inverter output, there is an inductor capacitor filter and finally across the inductor capacitor filter there is a res resistive load. So basically this capacitor, across, across this capacitor will be a smooth out output voltage, smooth sinusoidal voltage, so the resistor will see a smooth sinusoidal voltage. Now in the case of a square wave, if the, if the inverter was controlled by square wave modulation, this inductor and this capacitor values were huge, impractically huge. And now we are going to show about what happens if we use pulse width modulation instead. What happens to this inductor and this capacitor or rather how large do, we, do they need to be? Are they as large as in the previous case that is square wave modulation or are they significantly smaller? And the answer to that is yes. The filter parameters are significantly smaller such that it actually makes a huge huge impact on the size of the converter. So now that this is done let me just go over and start my circuit simulator. So first I shall activate my virtual environment. Always remember that's the first thing you should do. All right. Just always just in case I've gotten so used to it, but you should always just do this one check just to make sure in the right environment. Okay. Now that this is done, I shall launch my circuit simulator. And it's all working. Usually I just go type it, but this once time I'll just show you. If you want to launch the circuit simulator, you just have to copy this link. So let me just copy it. And let me paste it. Well, it's already saved because I keep accessing. So let's go back to the simulation library and you see now there are more simulations. So the last one was the filtered output with square wave modulation and now let's create a new one. And let's call this single UPS, let's call this filter output with PW. And I'm just going to copy paste it here, it's always recommended that you describe in detail what you're doing but I'm no, I don't want to spend time here. So let me get the path of this file. And let me paste it into the browser. So 
so now that this is done if it saves it means everything is okay go back and add the circuits so as before with square wave modulation we have two two circuit files the inverter leg and the inverter output so let's add them always make sure you're in the right directory so it's filtered output and pwm usually whenever you upload files it always stays in the in the file you uploaded last so if you were like in my case the previous lecture i was in square wave modulation that's what it was showing so make sure you change it inverter leg dot csv let's call this inverter leg save this file then add the next file that is inverter output always check this yes it is we are in the right directory actually it's not this we just call it and we shall save this so now that this is done always remember process circuit schematics and the message here is circuits do not have any detectable errors you can continue so let's go back to the main page next we have to edit the circuit parameters as always if you want you can change them individually i'm just going to upload that file because there is a parameter file and if you download this package you will get this parameter file so let me just upload this and you see all the parameters have changed oh see this is surprising this is probably a bug there is this one volt meter which actually has still a voltage level of 600 volts 120 volts so i should probably change it actually surprising that slipped And of course, when you do make such a change and you sh and you are sure that the change is final and is a is a correction, you can just export the parameters because this way, the same parameters get backed up to the spreadsheet. So let's go back to the circuit list. Let's go to the next one, and I shall choose the other circuit parameters. Output output underscore parameters dot csv. Upload the file. And it seems to be done. Let me just browse through it. Seems okay. Seems okay. Everything is okay. So I would always recommend once you do this upload, go through the parameters and just understand what's actually happening. Now, as before, we are going to start with the same values of cap initial values of capacitor. That is. 0 0.001 0 0.0001 which means 100 microfarad okay the capacitor is 100 microfarad the inductor is 1 millihenry now if you remember what happened last time with these values of inductor capacitor and this is also what i had chosen pre initially in the previous case with square wave modulation the output was practically useless all we got was a square wave with some oscillations all right so now we are using exactly the same initial values of capacitor and inductor, right? Let's see what the output is. To get a decent output waveform with square wave modulation, we needed 10 times this value of capacitor. We needed 1 millifarad and here we needed 10 milli, milli henry. So we have 1 tenth of the capacitor, 1 tenth of the inductor. So let's go back and check how it looks like. So we are done with parameters. Now go to control. There is only one control file, pwm.py. Save this control file. So since we've added it, let's go back and check. There's nothing much. It's the same as the one before. There is no Fourier analysis. That's all. So pulse width modulation, pwm.py. So if you see, it's the same one. We have a carrier frequency of 5000 hertz, 5 kilohertz, which is typical for many power electronic converters. We have the modulation signal, which is just a sinusoid of, uh, rather a cosinusoid of 60 hertz. We are generating a triangular waveform and we are comparing the triangular waveform with the modulation signal and we are generating the switch signals to the upper and lower, or rather, rather we are generating the gating signals to the upper and the lower switch. So almost the same thing. Now we just have to configure the control. This is empty. So we just have to upload the file. This is the descriptor file. 
upload and the values are already in the database so let's go back to the main page so we are pretty much ready to go so let's do so let's click on run and as always go over to the command line and check if there's any error message no there isn't very good So now that we don't have an error message, what we should do, we should add a plot. So as before, let's call this output voltage and let's plot these two output voltages. We know two output voltage. Let's go and look at what they are. First is this in this output voltage or rather this is not the output voltage. This is the voltage of the bridge or rather the leg, right? This is going to be a switch waveform. And here are the filter output. You have voltmeter inverter out. So, but anyway, this is the output voltage of the total converter. Well, not very good naming for that matter. But anyway, let's add these two. So, this inverter V out. I'll call this V O. Save it. And I will then choose the next one, which is inverter V out. And I shall call this V filter. That is a filtered output. So let's save this. Click done. And now it's a plot. So let's plot this. Just to see what's happening. It may not have run that much, but let's see. And it has run something. Very good. And you already see the result. It's just started, but you see the result. You have the switched voltage of the inverter leg. All right. This is a PWM switched voltage. The filter is an absolutely beautiful sine wave. All right. Now, let me run this again because it would have run for another cycle or so. And this is the cycle. And you see, now the cycle is found. And this shows the effectiveness of pulse width modulation. You see what I'm saying? Let's compare this now. Or rather, you don't have to go here. Let me compare this and let me put the other one with it, that is square wave modulation. Let me put this here. And let me put this here. So let me put these next to each other and compare these two. All right, we were producing a hundred volt rectangular waveform, and we needed huge, huge filter parameters to produce something like this. All right, something which is close to a sinusoid. And you see now the difference. We are producing a high frequency switched voltage output and with filter parameters that are one tenth, a capacitor that is one, the capacitor in the pulse width modulation case is one tenth the pulse width capacitor in the square wave modulation case. The inductor in the pulse width modulation case is one tenth the inductor in the square wave modulation case. So you have literally 10 times smaller filter, filter parameters. And yet you have an absolutely beautiful sine wave. Not only is it a beautiful sine wave, its magnitude matches the magnitude of the output voltage you don't have this boost factor here you have the boost because you have this huge inductor this huge inductor which is storing energy and therefore pushing its energy into the capacitor and boosting up the voltage you don't have that problem here because the inductor is not that large you see and this is the advantage let me run this again just for a few more cycles just to show what it looks like With. let me just look at this and you see it's continuing yeah so you see the difference it is a nice smooth sinusoid whereas here you have a sinusoid that's much larger but it's still smooth but you see how much how how much more effective this pulse width modulation has become and the reason is simple 
because you have a high frequency high frequency switched voltage you have moved your entire frequency spectrum to the high to the high frequency zone now there is a 50 hertz component and there is a 5000 5000 hertz component there is nothing in between and that's the reason why you're able to get this nice smooth waveform here you have the fundamental you have the third harmonic you have the fifth harmonic you have the seventh harmonic you have the ninth harmonic all the way until infinity all right and that's the reason why if you want to get rid of all these lower frequency harmonics and get something which is sinusoidal you need a huge huge filter 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 capacitor inductor so this is the effectiveness of pulse width modulation all right so as before i will end this lecture here I don't think there's anything much to show. The next lecture will talk about how we can now expand this concept to the three phase. All right. We've always talked about one single inverter leg, but really speaking, nobody uses one inverter leg. It's either an edge bridge or it is a three phase or it's something else. So we are going to talk about how that works. So this is the concept of pulse width modulation. And this is the reason why pulse width modulation is used and how it results in a better waveform as compared to square wave modulation and for that matter how do you use any kind of power electronic converter to produce a sine wave all right this is what this simulation shows that even though you don't have anything which is moving there is no rotational generator there is no synchronous generator induction generator there is nothing that moves but yet with static elements you are able to produce a sinusoidal waveform in both cases one in the case of square wave modulation and in the case of pulse width modulation the only thing is pulse width modulation is much more efficient in terms of filter parameters as opposed to square wave modulation. So with this, I'm going to end this lecture and the next lecture will be on three phase inverters. So for now, if you have any doubts, please feel free to message me on Facebook or email me. Until then, if you don't have anything, just wait for the next lecture to come out. I'm not sure when that will be, but thank you. Well, thank you so much for watching and see you soon. Goodbye for now.